Can you hear the fan? It's pretty quiet. Hopefully it doesn't mess with the recording. I spent the other day at the lake. I'm very sunburnt. My skin is like heating up from the inside out. I'm probably gonna turn beet red by the end of this video. And so I'm gonna leave the fan on so that I can have a comfortable work environment. What's up everybody? What's up internet? My name is Sergey Butenko. I'm an author and a filmmaker. I'm gonna give you a better bio here in a second. I've been spending a lot of time on YouTube watching videos by other creators talking about how much money they make on YouTube. They take you into the back end of YouTube and show you some of their analytics. These videos are really popular and they're very exciting and so I wanna make my own. But mine is gonna be slanted in the other direction. I wanna show you how little money some YouTubers make. Some YouTubers with sizable following, such as myself, I have almost 200,000 subscribers. I've been on YouTube since 2007. This channel, Butenko Films, has existed since 2009. So I think that qualifies me as an early adopter. And I wanna offer my version of events as I see it, because I think a lot of people get a false impression of what YouTube is and how much money you can earn. And there appears to be a glass ceiling that I can't penetrate. Maybe it's a skill issue, but maybe it's by design. And so if you're considering doing YouTube, if this kind of stuff is interesting to you, please stick around because I'm going to try and make the most transparent, most honest video showing the opposite side so that you can have a well-rounded picture. I think that's really important. I'm going to try really hard not to whine, even though my guts are churning and I want to complain a lot. And I'm, kind of, I'm going to try really hard not to do that, to be as clear-headed and rational as possible. I'm going to take you into the back end of my channel, show you what it's all about, show you how much money I make per video, how many views I typically get, because I guarantee you it's less than you think it is. And then if you stick around till the end, I'm going to show you how much money I've made in 14 years on Butenko Films. I'm going to just give you the total. So without further ado, let's go. Um, I did forget one thing actually. I want to give a big shout out to my friends Jackie and Dan. About a month ago we were sitting in a reservoir, we were enjoying summer being in water, and I was bitching and complaining about the hardships of life. They were doing it back, we had a nice back and forth. Uh, they're also creatives and they were very shocked when I was telling them that I upload a video and I expect thousands of views or tens of thousands of views, but I only get hundreds of views or you know, a couple thousand here and there jump change basically. Jackie and Dan were very shocked by this and they said, please make a video about this. This is very interesting stuff. We want to know. And so Jackie and Dan, this one's for you. And in the off chance that this video goes viral, yeah. I'm going to put their website up on screen because they run a really cool company called the Ashland Folk Collective. They bring really good indie bands to the Rogue Valley where I'm from. And they offer really affordable, really aesthetically pleasing concerts. I've gone to numerous concerts. I really have enjoyed myself at every concert. And those musicians have put wind back in my sails and just kind of, they've been a really nice dist distraction. So Jackie and Dan, you guys are awesome. Here's their website, check them out. And they recently moved to the East Coast where they're gonna be creating a similar company. So very soon, there's gonna be two locations where you can catch really cool concerts for not that much money and support a really good cause. Okay, without further ado, let us jump into the screen share. I wanna preface this by saying I've never done this before. I've never recorded myself in the screen. So I'm probably gonna make every mistake under the sun. Please, please be patient and excuse that when that happens. And I also wanna say that I may put black boxes somewhere on screen to protect sensitive information. Like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm flying by the seat of my pants. And these black boxes are not gonna be me censoring myself, but me trying not to get hacked, trying not to get money stolen out of my account, which inevitably happens once or twice a year anyway. And so maybe I won't do anything. Maybe I'll just publish as is because I have nothing left to lose. I literally don't. I'm disenfranchised in technology and I miss the way that life used to be when we lived in the real world. And more than likely in the coming weeks and months, I'm gonna Put myself back in the real world either entirely or just leave YouTube as a hobby uh, actually get to the point where I enjoy it again and I'm not burnt out and constantly stressed and you know 
So maybe, maybe I won't use any black boxes because what's the point? I get hacked anyway, despite all the security measures that are being sold to me for hard earned money, I still get hacked, money still gets stolen, and maybe I'll get lucky this time. Maybe one of the hackers will hack my account and uh, steal some of my debt. That'd be kind of nice. Okay, on we go. So this is my channel. This is called Butenko Films, following my curiosity. I am learning how to zoom in, even as we speak. So here I am, Butenko Films. This is me taking a cold plunge in Tacoma, Washington, when we had a snowmageddon a few years back. I've amassed 196,000 subscribers, uh, so almost 200K. More than likely, I'm gonna say 200K because it's easier to come off the tongue. So please allow me the kindness of just rounding up a little bit. I've made 615 videos on this channel. I have other channels too. This one has 615 videos, nothing to you know, be embarrassed about. That's a lot of videos. I would say that in total in my career, I've probably made something like 1500 videos across different channels for other people. And so I do have some experience about what I'm talking about. And I think that also makes me credible and worth listening to. If we go to the about page, we can see some more stats. This channel was created September 20th, 2009. Freedom. And the total viewership has been 26 million and change. So I'm no JP Sears. I'm no Justin Bieber. Uh, but if I had 26 million people attend a class I was teaching, I think that would be a really big class. And so I'm really happy about that. I have no regrets. And so what is Butenko Films? It's kind of a variety channel for all intents and purposes. Maybe that's part of the problem. People don't know how to categorize me. The algorithm doesn't know how to categorize me because I make videos about salads and green smoothies and wild edibles and van life. I recently started a wild uh, foraging cooking show. It's called Wild Edibles Test Kitchen. I'm seven episodes deep. And the basic premise of it is that I make one, I, t I find and forage for one wild edible and turn it into something palatable, maybe even something delicious. So I'm trying to break the barrier of entry for people wanting to learn to forage. I'm trying to perfect my own skills as a forager. And also when my wife comes home from her real job, then dinner is made and on the table. And so it's kind of like a win, win, win. This is my newest project on YouTube. And so far it's not going so well because you know, the last episode that I uploaded a week ago, seven days ago, only received 576 views. This is part of the reason I'm making this video, to show you that it's not always what it seems, that it's not always what it's cracked out to be. So some of my more popular videos have received millions of views. This is called How to Make a Tasty Salad and Dressing Every Time, 3.1 million views four years ago. That's my best performing video ever. Then I have the 30 Day Green Smoothie Challenge, 1.3 million. Wild Edibles, I led a foraging walk in Tacoma, and I got 1.2 million views on that video, something I'm really proud about because like I said, if I had 1.2 million people show up to a foraging class I was leading, by all metrics, I think that would be a very successful class. I also got to hang out with um, some van people in 2018 when I was shooting a documentary called Van Boom, and I did a factory tour of Sportsmobile West, and that got 1.1 million views. And then everything else is less than that. So that's just kind of some of the things that I've been working on. More foraging content. In the early days, I used to do one documentary project per year. Uh, I used to fund these documentaries through Kickstarter, but that door was also closed. Maybe we'll talk about that in this video, maybe we won't. And so I basically abandoned documentary filmmaking because I'm sick of being in debt and I'm still in debt from making I Want Abs, <laughs> my fitness documentary, in 2016, 2015. So I decided to risk less and just focus on things that come more cheaply to me because I didn't want to expose myself and my wife to uh, financial ruin. <laughs> and then most recently I've started making shorts because YouTube keeps changing their policies. One year they're telling us make more long form content. The next year they're telling us long form content isn't popular, so make shorts. And so I've been pretty flexible. I think you know I can pat myself on the back. I've been pretty flexible in that 
I've been adapting with the times and learning and going along and even having fun with it. So that's my channel in a nutshell. Oh, I've also reviewed some products. Where is that? Product reviews. Um, I missed it somewhere over here. One of the perks of YouTube is that when you get big enough, if you show companies that you can get enough views, they will eventually send you free stuff. And who doesn't like free stuff? Though I say free stuff in quotations because if you have to work really hard for this free stuff, then is it really free? I would argue not. And so I've equipped my van with all kinds of goodies. Um, I've gotten a lot of kettlebells. I love kettlebell kettlebelling. I like fitness. I have tent saunas and hearing protection, various drone things, gym equipment, lights, hardware cases, road showers, etc., etc. And so that has definitely been a perk of YouTube. That's in addition to the money that I've made. And we can certainly talk about that later on. So, you know, if you stick with me, I promise I'll make this worth your while. I want to jump into the analytics now and show you how much money I make per video, how much money some of my bigger videos have made. And then if you stick with me all the way to the end, I'll show you how much money I've made in 14 years of YouTube. And I guarantee you're going to be surprised. So here goes nothing. Let's jump into YouTube studio. And uh, we'll talk about this. And I almost forgot, and I got to show you this and brag a little bit. Let me just bounce in here. I've also earned one of these things. Boom. Here, let me cancel this out. This was presented to Butenko Films for passing 100,000 subscribers. This is one of the only awards I've ever won in my life. So I'm very proud of this, even though it's just kind of like a hunk of junk. It hangs over here where nobody ever sees it. I've only bragged about it twice in two videos, this being one of them, but it does kind of make me a little bit more credible, don't you think? So that's that. Okay, now we're here. We're in the back end of YouTube. I have nothing left to lose. I'm disenfranchised in technology and will want to go back to the real world. And right before I do, I'm going to show you everything. Check it out. 1,901... 1,906, 196,810 subscribers. I've gained 695 in the last 28 days. Uh, summary has been, you know, this is, I've ha had 150,000 views in the last 28 days. So in the last month, 150,000 people have watched my stuff. 16,000 watch time hours and I've earned a whopping $745.87. So that's what I've earned in the last month of YouTubing. It's not nothing. You, you can't find that money on the sidewalk, like my grandmother used to say, but you also can't live on $745 a month. That's way below the poverty line. Here's the last video that I uploaded, Wild Edibles Test Kitchen episode number seven, prickly lettuce soup with bacon it received a whopping total of 575 views in seven days and one hour. So a week ago I uploaded this video and I expected it to have at least a few thousand views, but it has less than 600 views, 27 comments. Thank you by, by the way for anybody that's commented and 80 likes. Brutal, absolutely brutal. The average view duration is eight minutes and 14 seconds, which I think is actually pretty good. And so let's just jump into the analytics of this video and I'll show you more. So this video has gotten 575 views since it was published. That's about the same as usual. So even though I have 200,000 subscribers almost, typically YouTube is telling me that I get roughly the same viewership and it's like less than a thousand. Typical is 500, look right here, I don't know if you can see the pop-up, but it's 510 to 790. That's my typical viewership on 200,000 subscribers. So let's actually quickly do the math on that. Why don't we? So if we go 575 divided by 200,000 times 100. So 0.28%, 0.28%, less than 1% by a long shot 
of how many people viewed it. Now I know this isn't completely accurate because not all those people are subscribed. So let's just quickly jump into that and do more mental math. Uh, let me just hide this real quick. So here's some more information about the video. I don't know if you can see this. Whoa. So subscription fee, uh, let me zoom out. Subscription feed, I guess that means that those people that are subscribed to my channel, they don't get a notification, but my video pops up in their subscription feed. 31% found that video through that. And I got a whopping 178 views from that. Then from notifications, actually people getting notified that a video was uploaded from my channel, 27% of my viewership came from that. So that's 156 views in total. And so let's just quickly do the math on that. On what percentage of my subscribers got notifications of my video, right? So let's go 200,000. Wait, no. Uh, 156, those that got notified. So 156 people got notified about my video. Let's divide that by the total subscriber base and then multiply that by 100 to get our percentage. Please let me know if I'm doing my math incorrectly, which it's highly likely, I'm no mathematician. And so 0.078%, 0.078% of my subscriber base actually got a notification that my video was uploaded. Do you see the problem? It's like, what is the point of having a subscriber number? And to, and to, and 2023 why does it matter nobody even gets notified and I know that years ago uh, subscribers would get videos delivered to them and then it changed where you now have to at nauseum say please like and comment and hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell for notification in order for people to even have a chance at finding your video but I mean that seems ridiculous 0.078% of my subscribers got notifications of my recent video being uploaded. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but that just seems so low. <sighs> it's just disheartening is what it seems. It just seems like very low and it doesn't seem realistic. In fact, the other day I was sick over it. It was like 1030 at night. I couldn't sleep. So I emailed YouTube support and I just started talking to this guy or girl named Riley and I said, doesn't this seem weird? Isn't it whacked that I have 196,000 subscribers and 0.078% of my subscribers get notified? Can you please look into my account? Maybe something happened. Maybe there's a strike against my account that I don't know about. What's going on? Riley looked into everything and said, dude, you're, it looks like you're on track. Nothing's wrong. Everything is right. Keep up the good work. Keep working hard. Oof, completely deflating. Completely freaking deflating. It's like, what's the point? What, you know? What is the point? It's like working really hard, going to a job, working really hard. It took me 30 hours to make this video, and my payment was $8.15. <laughs> that means that in the area where I live, I can buy a latte and maybe leave a tip, maybe. I also lost 11 subscribers by publishing this video. Uh, this is probably due to the fact that I used to be a raw food vegan. I grew up in a raw food cult, and for 22 years of my life I was a vegan. 18 of those years I exclusively ate raw vegan food. And so when some of my subscribers see that Sergey Butenko is eating bacon, they get really offended and run for the hills. And so I lost some subscribers by actually publishing this video. All right, let's keep going. So you can see here that I'm not lying. I've been a busy bee and I just have pages and pages of videos. I can actually make this a little bit bigger. And I can just go through and show you that I have heaps of content. Look at this. So one of 50 being displayed on this page and I have 130 pages in total. Is that what that means? Rows in total. <sighs> yeah, so I've been busy. It's, you know, yeah, I've been busy. I have nothing else to say about that. So 
YouTube perpetually changes its politics. They can do that. It's their platform. I don't really have a say in that, even though I may not like it. It's their platform. They can do what they want. And so some years they say long form content is trending. Please make more of that. And we scramble to figure out how to do that, change our business models completely. And then recently they've been saying, hey, long form content sucks. Let's make more shorts. And so I've been scrambling to learn how to make shorts and how to edit horizontal video, even though that's not my nature. But I have to say that it's been more fun than I thought. And I'm enjoying learning how to be more economical with my words because I have a tendency to be very lengthy. And so with the shorts, I am learning how to express my message, message more concisely. That being said, here's the problem with shorts. So let's just go into the analytics. And so look, nice job. This short got 1,601 views. That's similar to what you typically get. So I'm getting way more views than the previous video discussed but my revenue is 17 cents. <laughs> what can you buy for 17 cents? What is the driving force? What is the motivation to create shorts when you make almost no money doing that? You know, I would throw that money on the ground and not even notice because in 2023, 20, you can't do anything with 17 cents. A couple weeks ago, my buddy and I, uh, we decided to look into inflation a little bit more. And so I dug up an old receipt that I found from 2015 and I made a short that actually did pretty good. It got 12,000 views. So look at that, I got 12,000 views. That's 10,000 more than usual. And so YouTube goes, great job. That's seven times higher than is typical. You actually gained 12 subscribers from it. So I gained back the subscribers that I lost from the bacon video and look at that. I earned a dollar and 21 cents. So better than 17 cents, not quite as good as $8, but still, you know, somewhere in the middle. And you know, the, the thing about shorts that kind of irks me is that they can be as hard to make as long form content, long form content. The jury's still out for me. Sometimes it's much harder to make a shorter video. That's good. You have to edit more and think about it more and take shots and, uh, just plan more. Sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's harder. And so maybe it's kind of a wash, maybe not, but the amount of work you put in is still pretty, pretty great, but the amount of reward you get is much less. Plus shorts are kind of like throwaway content. People generally watch a short one time, they flick through it and they never go back to it. And so the videos have much less, uh, much shorter lifespans. A long video about wild edibles that I do, at least I have the chance that people might go back and reference something and I might get more ad revenue or more viewership out of it. But typically it's been my experience that people don't go back to shorts. So that's what I think about that. It's, um, it's less, uh, less bang for your buck. Same amount of effort to make, less bang for your buck. And so if we go through here, you can see that, you know, 12,000 views on a short, 4,600, or back down to less than 1,000, 755, 1,600. Let's just zoom in a little bit more. Here's some more Wild Edibles Test Kitchen stuff. 1,056, 1,159, 1,328, 855, 610, 939, 3039. What is that? 3039. Oh, it's another short. So just for the hell of it, let's look at it. Oh, look, 3000 views, 28 cents. <laughs> That's so pathetic. That's so pathetic. You know, 28 cents plus 17 cents. I still can't buy anything for that amount. Now let's look at some of my more popular videos. Um, how do we do that? What's the easiest way to do that? Dun, dun, dun. Let's go filter, view counts. So let's go apply. I don't know what I'm doing. Visibility. Oh, right there, boom. If we hit that, now we're going from highest to lowest. Now here's where things get interesting, right? So it hasn't all been bad. There were years when I was making a pretty decent income. Um, I made this video called <laughs> salad and dressing, how to make a tasty salad and dressing every time. 
And a little backstory, this video was made right off the cuff. I, people of my whole life have been telling me, Sergey, you make really good salads. You make really good salads. How do you do it? And to me, it seems like second nature. I don't really think it's anything special. But because so many people told me, I said, let's just make the video and I'll show you, I'll show people how I do it. And it became my most viewed video. I didn't plan it. I didn't talk about, uh, you know, I didn't think about what I was going to say or what I wasn't going to say. And ironically, <laughs> it's made me the most amount of money and it has earned me the most amount of subscribers. And it's also garnished a lot of, um, it's also the comments are just like a wash. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people say, how dare you be so lengthy, cut it down, make it shorter. Other people are like, we really love the extra information, please make more of this. And so here are the stats on that. So over 3 million views, uh, 635,000 watch time hours, that's pretty good. I've gained 43,000 subscribers from it. And in total, I've earned $31,655.62 for making one video about a salad. That's incredible, right? That's absolutely unbelievable. And when I saw that I could do this, I was like, let's make more of these videos. How do we do that more? These are life-changing figures right here. How do we do more of that? And ever since then, I've been chasing it and I've made hundreds of videos and I just cannot repeat that. It's The door has been closed to me. The door has just been closed. I can't do it. And so let's just go more into the analytics here. I don't know. Let's go reach. This is kind of more interesting, right? So 60 million impressions. That's a lot more impressions than 1,100. Um, you know, here's more information. Browse features. This video, most people found it. 88% of the people found it through the suggest feature. So again, this has nothing to do with my subscriber counts. YouTube just saw that people liked this video and started suggesting it to people. So I could say that my head was on the chopping block and the overlords at YouTube, the algorithm, whoever makes those calls said, oh, this is a good video, we'll push it up. And so this time I succeeded and I got rewarded for it. 24% found it on YouTube, 21% found it on uh, Google, a search. Somehow 8% found it on WhatsApp. That must be another country, a country that uses WhatsApp to search stuff. Yeah, kind of interesting. What else? Oh, let's go to audience. That's kind of interesting sometimes. So 82.6% of my audience for this video was female, 17.4% was male. I guess that tells you who likes eating salads more, males or females. And then the age range, is like 45 to 65. That's the biggest block of people watching that video. That's typically my audience's age anyway. So I'm 38, gonna be 39 soon, and I've noticed that I guess we're drawn to people that are similar to us, and so kind of 35 and above year olds watch my videos. I don't really do well in the 24 or, or below category. So there's some details on that. Just for the hell of it, let's look at another video. Here's the 30 day green smoothie challenge. So when I was growing up, my mom popularized the concept of green smoothies. And I kind of ran with some of the themes that she was doing and made my own challenge, hoping to inspire more people to eat healthy. I've tried really hard not to be pushy with, my, with anything that I do because I understand that there's a hundred different ways to skin a cat. And what, what may work for me may not work for somebody else. So again, I just share my story. And if people follow it and benefit, then we all win. Great. And if people, excuse me, if people see what I'm doing and they're like, this is stupid, then they usually leave a hateful comment and move on with their lives. And so this video, in the last 24, uh, 28 days, has earned uh, $46.00. How can we change this to boom? No, last. let's go lifetime. Since uploaded, boom. Okay, so this green smoothie challenge has earned me $9,853.44, 45 cents. 
I like that number. I want to make more videos like that. That's a great number. 1.3 million views. It's earned me 12.2 thousand subscribers, subscribers that never see what I upload after that. And, um, you know, so I've been trying to make more videos like this, but again, it's hard. For every video like this that I make, I make 50 other videos trying to accomplish the same thing and they never make it. And actually there's a video that I wanna show you. Uh, like I mentioned previously, I like kettlebells. And so for some reason this YouTube search function is so stupid, it doesn't recognize videos in your own channel. So a couple of years ago I decided to get certified in kettlebelling because I decided Maybe it'd be fun to teach kettlebells on my property outside, getting vitamin D from the sun, encouraging people to work out, working out myself. And so I got certified through IKFF, which is a International Kettlebell Federation, to teach kettlebells. And so I made this video, you had to upload yourself doing the test so that you can get graded and then pass or fail. And so I uploaded this video and it was interesting because it amassed 50,000 views like right out the gate and then it just stopped. It just, it's like somebody pushed a button. They said, nope, you're done. And they ejected me and I never got a single view more than that. I mean, that's an exaggeration for sure. I got 0.8 thousand views. So like 50,000 out the gate, 46,000 out the gate and then like somebody pushed a button, it was just dead in the water and it's been dead ever since. And let's see how much this video has earned since it's uploaded, since it was uploaded. Okay, $33.10. So you saw, you saw what I did there. The last 28 days, it's, oh, it's earned 68 cents. And then in its lifetime, $33.10. Whatever, you know, it's, I wasn't making that video to earn a bunch of money, but it's nice to be rewarded on the side. It's nice to double or even triple dip. And, you know, 33 bucks, that's not even like a quarter tank of gas these days. It cost me about $120 to fill the Sprinter van. And so I can't really live off that money. I can't continue doing what I'm doing. And so this is more or less what I wanna share in this video is that subscriber numbers don't mean shit. In 2023, they absolutely don't mean shit. And in fact, when I had 13,000 subscribers, my viewership was much better. I would get tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions of views per video. And not only that, but having more subscribers and less views has actually been damaging to my channel. Let me explain. So one of the perks of YouTube that's money aside, which I've already briefly mentioned, is that I can leverage that and get free stuff and get partnership deals and get sponsorship deals. But the thing that most people don't understand if they haven't been YouTubing is that people don't just wanna give you free stuff because they like your videos. They expect something in return. They expect advertising and they expect, you know, exposure. And so when I used to have less viewers but better exposure, I could leverage that better. I could say, hey, send me some kettlebells. I'm gonna use them in a video. I'm gonna talk about them and you're gonna get all this exposure and it's a win-win. Everybody wins. It's free advertising for you and it's free kettlebells for me. Now, because I have 200,000 subscribers and 500 people watching every video that I upload, which is nothing, people have been more scrupulous, companies and brands have been more scrupulous and they look at what I do and say, hey, in the last year, your average viewership has been 1300 views. Sorry, dude, that doesn't pencil out, no. And so all those doors have been closing and are already closed. So that sort of sucks, you know, that, that was a major perk in addition to money and earning a living on YouTube, that's a major perk that just went away. What else, what else? I have this handy list that I made to try and stay on track. One of my hypotheses as to why this is happening is because I don't think social media companies appreciate or benefit that much when we get to do what we want, when we get to do a free for all. It's kind of like if I were to have a garage sale on my neighbor's land, if neighbor Bob goes, hey, why don't you just have a garage sale on my property? I don't need anything for it. And then you have a garage sale and it proves to be really successful. You start selling a bunch of stuff and earning a bunch of money. 
And then neighbor Bob is sitting there thinking, damn, why is he reaping all the reward and I get nothing? And he wants something for it. So the next time he says, you can't have a garage sale for free. You got to give me 10% of your earnings or you got to, better yet, I'm going to charge people as they come through the driveway. I'm going to charge them five bucks to give them access to your garage sale. It's kind of something like that. And I want to show you a brief example as to how I came to this hypothesis. Um, because the door to all social media companies has been shutting for me. So let's just quickly jump over that and look at that now. So we talked about YouTube already. Um, YouTube doesn't give me access to my own subscribers, which is a major bummer. Let's look at Facebook. Here's my Facebook profile. I have 7.9 thousand followers. In years past when I uploaded to Facebook, you know, shared a post, I'd have thousands if not hundreds of responses hundreds to thousands of responses my tongue is starting to get tired and so seven days ago when i published my wild edibles test kitchen episode seven i thought you know why don't i supercharge it and put it on facebook and maybe more people will see it and the viewership will just get bumped up maybe i'll go past 500 maybe it'll be 600. so i uploaded it to facebook i wanted to share it with my friends and you can see that I uploaded it when August 3rd at 2.12 p.m., so seven days ago, because right now we're recording it and it's August 10, August 10th. And so I uploaded it to my Facebook and wouldn't you know it, not a single like, not a single comment, not a single share, nothing. Nobody even saw it because Facebook also doesn't want me to have a garage sale without them benefiting. And so there's this awesome boost post button, which I've used and played around with with years past where I give Facebook money and then they have bots like, share and comment on my video and I still don't get shit for it, but Facebook gets some of my money. That's how that works. Now let's hop over to Instagram and I'll show you that uh, everything is the same there too. So I have, 1,075 posts since I got on Instagram. I have 5,498 followers. That's not a huge following by any stretch of the imagination. That being said, I would expect that if 5,000 people are following me, when I uploaded a video or a picture or something, I'd get 300 likes, 500 likes, maybe 1,000 likes, I don't know. Is that a crazy expectation? Here's the reality. I upload it. 17, 18 people see it. And that's kind of typical for me. I think I've only gotten 300 or plus likes on a photo three times in the last eight years, three times. Here's another, here's a reel that I did about my chickens. And look at that, 60 people liked it. That's nothing, you can't, you can't do anything with those numbers. Those numbers don't impress anybody. I like the fact that I get to share it with some of my friends, um, but I don't even think my friends see my posts. I think like random people on the internet see my posts. And so whereas Instagram used to be me following people I was actually interested in, now I get delivered content from people I don't even care about, people I don't know, people I've never followed. And I assume that the same is true of other people so like they subscribe to me but then they get ads for something else and it's not like we're missing what we actually want we signed up for one thing but we're getting a completely different thing same is true of Kickstarter here's my the back end of my Kickstarter project as I mentioned at the beginning of this video I used to fund independent documentary projects through Kickstarter and so in the past, I've done things like Van Boom, is Van Life the New American Dream? Question mark. That video is on YouTube free of charge. And so I funded it with almost no money, 3,600 bucks. 88 backers helped me fund it in 2018. In years prior, the 30 Day Green Smoothie Challenge, I made a little bit more money. That really helped me get that project off the ground. It was a very lengthy project. There was a lot of expenditures, and so Kickstarter used to help me kind of fit the bill. And then at a certain point, they shut the door too. Now I don't, when I launch a Kickstarter project, I don't have access to my followers and subscribers. Those emails just 
I don't know. They don't get read. They go straight to junk. And so it's not a viable platform anymore for people like myself. You know, I want abs. I made $17,000 on Kickstarter, which really helped me make the movie. I'm still $5,000 in debt from that movie because I spent more than I earned. But hey, that's the definition of a broke dick filmmaker, right? If you look up broke dick filmmaker in the dictionary, you'll see my picture. Wild Edibles was a pretty good topic for a while. I could fund various documentary projects doing that. And my best project to date on Kickstarter was $21,793 for Powered by Green Smoothies. That movie is also available on YouTube for free. Feel free to check it out. The premise is that I put a bunch of endurance athletes, i.e. my friends who run and do CrossFit, uh, on a green smoothie protocol. I added green smoothies to their diet, and then I checked their blood markers, their urine, with the help of medical professionals to see how their health would be affected. And um, the results were pretty interesting. So I highly recommend that one. Again, not pushy about health, just sharing what I find. Whether it's YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or Kickstarter or TikTok, I can't show you TikTok because it's only on my phone. Same thing is true. They open the floodgates, they give you access, they tell you that there's this dream that we're all pursuing and it's within reach, it's right there. You could have the life you've dreamed of, freedom, access to certain people, free stuff, you know, creativity. But in practice, eventually once the platform gets big enough and they don't need you anymore, they just shut the floodgates and then you're forced to have to pay to boost your projects, to boost your videos in order for people to view them. And the other day I was running down the street with my dog, I was going on a jog and I was like, <laughs> I was thinking, what's the best way to go viral in 2023? And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. It's like, get boosted. The best way to go viral in 2023 is to get boosted. So another thing, another hypothesis I of course have to consider is that maybe I just suck at my job. Maybe I suck at my job and maybe that's why this is happening. Maybe it's because I'm creating variety content and because I'm not really that professional at my videos and there's better creators than me. And believe me, I've considered all those things. I'm my, my own biggest critic and I'm probably way too critical and way too much of a perfectionist. That's what my wife tells me, that's what my friends tell me. And I think that that is both a blessing and a curse because on the one hand, I do things to the best of my abilities and on the other hand, I have sleepless nights where I'm very hard on myself. And so I've of course considered the fact that maybe I'm just bad at my job. But I don't really think that's the case. In the end, I don't really think that's the case because I remember what YouTube started off as, the anti-establishment platform where people could be real and share real stories and cat videos and funny fails, et cetera, et cetera. And people just were drawn to it like magnets. They, we were sick of watching cable TV and sick of getting delivered ads. And so we went to YouTube to like see real people do real things. And then slowly over the years, it's evolved and now it's unrecognizable. I don't think that there's really like a place for people like me on YouTube anymore. It's all, it all went Hollywood. And nothing as what it's, is nothing on YouTube is as it seems, at least in my assessment. You know, sometimes I watch various creators and I'm like, wow, they're, ama they're amazing. They're able to accomplish that all by themselves. And then I read an article or watch another expose or something where it turns out they have an entire studio with an entire bay of editors with big money financing, you know, with tons of red cameras and et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, wow, no wonder. You have quite a bit of help. I'm a one man band trying to compete, trying to release videos because you tell me I have to release at least one video a week or else I'm not relevant anymore. And it's just an unbelievable workload and I'm like this cog in a wheel that's constantly thinking about making content and I'm getting so stressed out and it's not even fun anymore. I think that that means I'm burnt out. But the, what I'm competing against is like a different class of its own. You know, it's like a Hollywood studio compared to me. And so when I view that through that lens, then I know that it's not me, something pivotal something at the core of YouTube has changed 
and um, it's not the same platform that it once was, which is kind of a bummer because I miss the old YouTube. I miss the YouTube where it was more authentic and people accepted all types of people from every walk of life. And it's just not that way anymore, at least not by my assessment. So that's hypothesis number two. And I also want to say that one hard realization I've had is that my value and self-worth is gotten more tied to view counts and popularity than I care to admit. That's kind of a brutal admission, actually. I don't like that about myself. I'm definitely addicted to getting views and likes. I know I shouldn't read my comments, but everybody says that and they always do. So I do, I do from time to time read the comments. And there's a lot of hateful comments. Those aren't healthy for the psyche. Um, and I need to start working on that. And I have every intention to because it's not healthy. It's just not healthy. I know that I'm a bigger human being. I'm more of a person than just my views, than just my likes. That being said, what some people that don't create videos don't understand is that views are a currency. If you don't have money, views can act like money. If you have enough views, doors will be open to you. You'll have sponsorship deals. You'll have free products. You'll have invitation to certain events and so you know the fact that i've tied this social currency to self-worth is not 100 percent my fault because it is valuable and so just realizing that for myself kind of helps me be less negative and more kind to myself i think it's important for future youtubers to consider as they move forward like just be cautious that um if a video doesn't do as well as you want it to, that you're still a good person. You still have a lot more substance to you than those views. Some of these things are completely out of your control. And I know some creators personally that have written scripts that just shut all that away, lock it away from them so that they can't have that messing with their minds. If I was better at computers and better at programming, maybe I'd get something like that installed on my computer so I wouldn't even have the temptation but I have way too much on my plate as it is and I can't, I don't have the time to learn to code. This video is starting to get long and I kind of want to sign off sooner than later. And so I want to give you what I promised. I want to take you back into my analytics and show you how much I've made in the entire lifetime of YouTube, which has been 14 years on this channel. And so let's do that now. And so look, here it is right here. So your channel has gotten 26,630,186 views so far. And the whopping total has been $146,203.17. So almost $150,000 I've earned over the last 14 years. And I've attained 26.6 million views. So let's just quickly do the math on that because I'm curious. So I've earned in total $146,203. Let's be accurate in 17 cents. And we're gonna divide that by 14. That's how many years I've been on YouTube. Why is it doing that? Hold on. For some reason this calculator doesn't like really precise numbers. So let's just do um, 146,000 divided by 14. I don't know what that means. Here, here's another calculator. This one's better, but harder to see. So let's do 146,203 point 17 divided by 14. That's how many years I've been on YouTube. See, look at that. So I've been making off YouTube $10,443.08 per year. $10,443. <laughs> I mean, that is low. That is way below the poverty line. When I was growing up, my parents were very much alternative. They were raising us in an alternative fashion. And they used to say, when we didn't want to do the work, they used to say, what are you going to do if not this? Are you going to get a job at McDonald's? 
And that was always used kind of in a negative derogatory context. Like if we're not doing lecturing, our next best hope is to work for McDonald's, which it's funny that they would bring that up, but whatever, that's another story. And I guarantee you that if I got a job at McDonald's, I'd be making more than $10,000 a year. In fact, let's look it up let's see. How much, what is the average salary of a McDonald's worker? Let's go to Google, La Google. How much money does a McDonald's worker make per year? Okay, so how much money does a McDonald's in Oregon pay? The average McDonald's hourly pay ranges from approximately $7.25 per hour for a team trainer to $20.35 per hour for swing manager. The average McDonald's salary ranges from approximately $15,000 per year for team trainer to $42,427 per year for a general manager. So, um... <laughs> that's brutal so if I was making like the shittiest money on working at McDonald's I'd make five thousand dollars more than I've been making on YouTube as an average and then if I was a manager at McDonald's I'd be making forty two thousand four hundred and twenty seven dollars which is way more than I've been making on YouTube so, so mom and dad if you're listening I would, have weighed, I would have made way more money working for the devil. In all fairness, I can't just say that uh, my the income that I've earned off YouTube was the only reward. Obviously, there's been other benefits. I've equipped my sprinter van with all kinds of gizmos and gadgets and racks pretty much free of charge. I've gotten all kinds of products and camera gear and lighting equipment. All of that costs money and thus, because I didn't have to shuck out money, I saved money. I don't, that's very difficult to calculate. I'm not that good of a mathematician, but I would guess that that's also worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we'd have to sometime, somehow factor that into the equation. And then um, another thing is that, let me share my screen again. Another benefit off YouTube that's a huge benefit, Amazon, is that I got to promote my book, Sergei Butenko. And so, you know, I have this Wild Edibles book that I wrote 10 years ago. Wild Edibles, a practical guide to foraging with easy identification of 60 edible plants and 67 recipes. And through my videos, I was able to promote that book as well as other books that I've written, the 30 Day Green Smoothie Challenge, the Green Smoothie Challenge for Busy People. And this has been a huge perk to me because my publisher certainly isn't promoting it. Uh, traveling to classes and promoting my book that way, the old the old style, kind of the guerrilla marketing, that's getting much more hard because it's almost impossible to spread information about classes these days. Like I recently led two wild edibles classes this summer and I hung flyers, I advertised on Instagram, on YouTube, and on Facebook. And when people showed up, I pulled them. I said, how did you find out about this class? And so out of two classes that had 40 people per class, only two people saw flyers, which means that people don't look at flyers anymore. Uh, all the women saw the, the classes that I was advertising on Instagram, and all the men saw the classes that I was advertising on YouTube. And so one of the perks of YouTube is I've been able to plug my book and get you know, some, some good viewership from it. I've been able to... You know, it has 952 reviews currently, all five stars. I wonder how this works because at one point it had 1,100 reviews and then that number just dropped and now it's back down below 1,000. So I don't really know what the deal is on that. Maybe somebody can explain it to me in the comments below. But because I promoted my book in my YouTube videos, it was selected as an editor's pick and it's been on editor's pick for two years, two, two-ish years on Amazon. So that's nothing to cry about. And um, you know, there's been other perks, it's undeniable. That being said, I've never been a rich man. 
I've always lived, I've always skirted the poverty line and it's becoming harder and harder now, especially as inflation goes through the roof and our money just doesn't get stretched as far as it once did. And my family's expanding. We actually have a baby on the way, my wife and I. And whereas before I was willing to risk it to be a broke dick filmmaker and live in a car by myself, be homeless, uh, then you know I eventually got a girlfriend that gave, brought more responsibility into my life and thus less risk. Then we got married, more responsibility and less risk. Now we have a baby on the way, way more responsibility and less risk. And so I'm not really willing to risk it anymore. And I think I'm gonna quit, at least quit YouTube full time. I'm burnt out, I don't even like it anymore. And I wanna get back to the point where making a video is enjoyable and I do it not for the views, I do it for myself or for the universe or for God or for other people so I can help them in their lives live better lives. And not because I'm trying to earn a living and struggling. And so I'm actively looking for another job, something that I can meet my, my needs and my family's needs. And I think that it's really important for people to share these kinds of messages so that we shape the future generations, the people that are going into YouTube now, so that we shape their overview correctly. Because it's really easy to look at some of the bigger channels and be like, wow, if I start YouTube in a few short years, I'm gonna be making $100,000 per video and everybody's gonna want me, everybody's gonna like me, and there's no downside. So that's why I'm making this video. And I'm really curious to open it up now and you know, I don't like to read the comments because it's generally not good for my self-esteem, but for this video, I will make an exception because I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear what you think is going on and where I went wrong or what I did right, or is it my fault at all? Maybe it's, maybe you would, maybe you will agree with me that it's internal changes at YouTube, uh, maybe shadow banning, maybe, you know, just the work of bots that's creating a more difficult work environment. And I want to hear your thoughts about this glass ceiling. You know, how is it that this dream is being sold? Like you could have it all, just keep working hard. You know, it's, it's like essentially the American dream. It's the digital American dream. Work hard, uh, try hard, give it your best effort, add value. And eventually as your channel grows, you can have anything you want. And that's, I've actually found the exact opposite. The last thing that I want to say before I sign off is that I used to tell everybody to start YouTube channels. I would say, you know, to my friends, to acquaintances, to family members, and even strangers, I'd say, start a YouTube channel. It's free advertising. It's not that much more work. And it's like having a store in the mall. You may have a store that nobody knows about, but when they go to the mall, they're likely to see your store when they're walking by. They might even enter and buy something. And so then you would benefit free of charge. But what I've learned over the last decade and a half is that it's a lot of work, it's a lot of sleepless nights, it's a lot of thankless work, and you don't really have a storefront in the mall. You're tucked away in some broom closet, and very few people walk by that broom closet, and so you don't really benefit that much. You just work really hard, stress really hard, and live on the computer instead of in the real world, and so the benefits are not that great. That's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you spending the time with me on YouTube today. And now I'm gonna go outside and enjoy some vitamin D and learn how to live in the real world again. That's it, that's all. Take care.